Okay guys, um, out here at the Round Lake Wilderness Area, outside of Tupper Lake, New York. Um, this is going to be my first solo overnight camping trip, but it's also going to be my first kayak camping trip. So, um, last year I got a video where Odin and I stayed uh, out in the woods, we car camped. He wasn't too crazy about it, so he's staying with my mom. And we're gonna camp overnight here somewhere on Round Lake, hopefully. Um, not too many cars in the parking lot. There's only a spot for about four or five cars there. Um, you can also get to Lake Lila and Little Tupper Lake from this area. And there's a ranger headquarters down the road a little bit. So I'm not sure what the situation will be down here. There are 11 campsites down here. Um, here's the map. We are here and this is round lake where we're going so we're gonna aim for one of these spots i was here quite a few years ago um and there's some really nice spots up there we were there uh, when this area first opened um, it was part of the whitney family's state and they sold it to new york state and it took a while but new york state um made some camping areas here's lake lila that's another place i've been for a day paddle uh, a lot more developed since i've been there a uh, very beautiful area and then there's little tupper so all that shaded stuff is state land and the rest is private land that's part of what makes you adirondack park unique it's uh, six million acres of privately and state-owned land so um it's pr pretty interesting so we're gonna we're gonna sign in here at the uh log book so they know we're here and uh the kayak is down there uh, i've got way too much stuff uh, she hopefully i can get her she's listing a little bit to the left there but hopefully i can get her right in the water um i'll go over what i have later the deer flies or horse flies or whatever they are, are intense right here in this spot so and it is like 70 degrees supposed to be 80 something today so uh we'll see you probably back out on the water okay we're out on the water um, apparently my GoPro mount that I had on the side of the kayak is not the right one, so I couldn't get the right angle. I was going to give you a uh, kayak view of this for a while, but I'm hand-holding now, so we got to paddle down this little inlet. Let's see this here. Paddling this way. So catch up with you further on down. The channel has widened out. Uh, we're going to go to a little boat left here or port. Again, I have to hold this camera and paddle at the same time, so unfortunately. I'm going to have to rig something up with what I have packed in the back of the kayak. Oh. Uh, once I find a campsite. So we're headed down in that direction and then we're gonna loop around out that way. Lots of dragonflies. The, uh, sorry for the swinging of the camera. Lots of dragonflies, the bugs have died down a little bit. It's not so hot as, a, as it was. Uh, water's cooling, but it is still a little warm. We got some lilies. We get these yellow lilies. I don't know how good you can see that from a distance. We get yellow lilies up here in the Adirondack, and we have a white lily as well. That's where we're headed. Helicopter action overhead. So I'll catch up with you in a few. Now, there's some beaver dam, not beaver dam, beaver lodge right there, I believe. I don't know if you can see it. The, the, I believe that was there when I was here years ago. I remember there being a series of beaver lodges. I don't know. It doesn't look very active because there's nothing any fresh on top.
campsite one is right over there. Somebody's got a canoe there. It's hard to see the sun is glaring, so I can't get a good shot of it. It's campsite one, so somebody's already there. So we're gonna head on over to campsite two. I'm looking, I'm looking for a particular campsite from when I was here years ago. Hopefully uh, the beach, we had a nice little beach. So hopefully that beach is still there and hasn't been overgrown, but we're gonna keep on paddling. That was campsite one. So that back in there is the campsite I want. You probably can't see it very well, but there is somebody there. I remember there's a tree there that's set up like a throne. It's a nice little beach. There's somebody there. Who knows if he's staying over there. I don't know what number that is. I haven't been able to find campsite two yet. I'm not sure what number that is, but I'm just gonna keep going along the shore here and uh, see if I can't find uh, the next campsite and then kind of figure out which one this is so I can remember it for the future. And if I've got enough energy and whatnot, maybe I will come back in a while and see if he's just there for the day. Nobody seemed to be indicating that they were staying overnight other than me, so maybe he's there just for the day and I could swing back and grab that one. But we're gonna keep looking. So there's camp four. So I'm thinking the one I wanted was Camp 3. That was a long pile to get to that. We're going to crash here. Um, camp 5 and 6 aren't far that way. So Camp 4 looks kind of small. Camp 5 might be at the beach that's over there. So I am going to head in that direction. This is, um, I haven't paddled as much as I used to paddle and I'm pretty tuckered out. It's, I don't know how long it's been. Maybe an hour or so. Uh, I got a lot of weight in here. Um, more than I'm used to carrying. I don't normally take much. And I've got quite a bit of weight in here. More than I need probably. And it's really slowing the boat down. She's a tank anyway. Um, but with all this extra weight, she's she's pretty hard to paddle. So we're going to see if uh, four, five, maybe six, five. Five hopefully is where that beach is. Six, uh, if, if that is not where the beach is. Then I'll keep going, but um, also need to find suitable hammock hanging trees, so that, that adds another level of challenge to this. So, here we go off over that way. So, here's five. Oops, let me... the sun is not cooperating with me today. This is five. Um, it's campsites up there. I'd have to drag the kayak up onto the rocks. So we're going to go, six looks like to be right over there. So I'm going to check six out. Okay, this was not camp six. I don't think. There's no disc for six. There is a no fires sign. I do not see a disc for camp six although there's a well-worn path up here yeah normally these things are better marked from the water um, I'm gonna take a take a walk up here and see if there's a campsite up here and if there is I don't know why they didn't put a marker down on the water unless this is an alternate route to camp five and there's another way up there oh, yeah, there's a there's a full-on path back here so I don't know what's going on there toilet Toilet sign there. I'm wondering if this doesn't go up to Camp Five, and then the other way goes up to Camp Six. But it's good to get out the boat and stretch ourselves a little bit. All right, there's a no camping sign there. Ooh, wait a minute. Looky here. 
to go around the other side so the sun's not in the way. There's a fire pit right there, which if I do what I'm thinking of doing, might be a little too close to comfort, but I might be able to hang my ha hammock on those two trees. They're pretty far apart and they're big, so I'm not sure. So this must be Camp 5. There's a sign for no camping there. Yep, so this goes down to Camp 5. Where the smell of pines is heavy, it's nice. So that's 5. 6 must be down the road. So I'm going to go back this way. And I will check in with you once I hit new ground. So I'd uh, check out the toilet while I had a chance. This is the first time I have seen one of these little jobs in the Adirondacks. Normally, you have a full outhouse. This is just a seat. So that's different. Okay, I'm back at the T. The kayak is down there on the beach. We're gonna go back this way along this road. Let's see if just for a little bit because camps five and six are relatively close to each other on the map however that map is deceiving because it is actually quite far I also have my Garmin e-trex GPS but all I have is the base map that comes with it and it's not detailed I should have downloaded some uh, maps for this area uh, these are probably access roads for the DEC. When they built them, I'm guessing. Maybe they patrol back here too. Just kind of looking around and see if I see anything. It might be a campsite off here. Oh, the mosquitoes are back when here. I was actually doing pretty good in the water. I don't see anything. I don't want to go too far. And worst comes to worst, I can give five a shot. Uh, those trees were. I'm not good with judging distance, but they look to be a little close together for what I need. Plus, they're old and big. I'm not sure I got enough strappage to go around. Alright, so I'm going to give up on this and get back in the boat. And go from there. Try to handhold this GoPro. This is a possibility. It's getting on noon, it's 1142. Um, I don't want to be at this all day. So. I want to at least secure a campsite, get some meat. And then, uh, if I got the energy. I could paddle some more explore, but I think I'll probably. The water's pretty cold, but I might go for a swim if I have a suitable area to do that. In fact, leeches or anything like that. So I'll get back in the water. We'll see you back on the water at some point. So here's six. We're right at the mouth of the bog stream, which is right down there. Um, I might go on a little further. Like I, this map is definitely, the distances are a lot further than it looks. Um, I may go, that's pretty overgrown in there, but I'm not sure. The campsite's probably back a ways. So 
Seven is supposed to be across from four. Seven is back that way. Seven's on the other side of the lake. Oh. Yeah. There's not really a good landing area here for somebody as old and out of shape as I am, so I'm gonna try this and then if uh, you may see me, I may be soaking wet. But I'm gonna try to get out here and we'll check out six. Okay, we found seven. So this one looks a little more promising. We've got a lot of trees here. here. Let's look for the designated campsite. The problem with that around deck campsites I've discovered for hammocking is that they put the fire pit really close to where the tent site is and you end up having to put your camp right near the fire pit which I don't like. Some people may like that, people who don't know what they're doing may like it, but tents are highly flammable and it would suck to burn your tent and you have to sleep all night without one. So here's the fire pit. There's the designated camping area. See the other thing is they clear out all the trees so that you can have a designated camping area. So I'm gonna crawl around here. Got this little doohickey since I'm bad at measuring to tell me how far apart trees are. And so far I've been terrible at it, so it's good. It's good to have. Nothing here. Nothing here that looks far enough apart. It's either too close or too far. These are. Let me measure some trees and I'll get back to you. Okay, looks like I found a spot that uh, it's about 13 feet, which is right on the edge of where they recommend to hang on an 11-foot hammock. Uh, the bugs are pretty wicked back there. Up here by the fire pit, uh, not too bad, but the mosquitoes, deer flies out here, but the mosquitoes back there are pretty bad. But uh, once I get the hammock set up, I won't stay there. Looks like there's a lot of firewood I can uh, cut up here. Um, so we'll get a fire going at some point. Um, I'm going to go secure the boat and bring all my stuff up. So uh, check back in a little bit. Okay, so got the Dutch Bear Chameleon hammock set up. Um, I don't think I got it 100% right. It looks a little weird, but... I got it in it, feels okay, bridge line a little tight, not too bad. Uh, threw my arrowhead equipment top quilt in there. I think that's the new river top quilt. I don't know how much I'm gonna need it today. It's in the 80s. I think it's supposed to get down into the 70s. Um, I do have my arrowhead equipment under quilt. It's called the Owie Key. Uh, I may have switched those too, but um, I th I think they're good to 20, so it's way overkill. Uh, I may not even put the underclothes on, I'll just have it near the hammock and if it gets cold I'll jump out and throw it on, but I'll have to see how it is as, as uh, time goes on. It's uh, 141 now. Um, the bugs, the bugs are still pretty bad. They come and go. I put some of that Natropel on and it works. I mean, it only works for like an hour or so. Uh, supposed to be good for longer than that. I've got some other stuff. Um, it's warm. I'm sweating pretty good. I don't know if I'm going to go in the water or not. Maybe cool off quite a bit because that water is cold. Um, but I am going to, my next, uh, I've got a little bit of firewood gathered here. Some was here. Uh, there's a lot around. I don't know how much I'll need. Um, I'm going to wait on that, I think. My next order of business is lunch, and then I will go get water. I'm gonna get water right out of the lake um, and filter it with the Sawyer, Sawyer, the bigger one of the two, not the, not the squeeze. I guess the mini, I don't know what it's called. Uh, I have a 
platypus big zip. I'm just gonna scoop the water and see if I can't gravity feed. I don't know if I have all the necessary parts to gravity feed. I do have two smart water bottles uh, full of water. That's lukewarm. Um, I'm gonna need some water to do my mountain uh, house meals in, but let's see. I just threw a bunch of stuff in here for lunch, or for food anyway. Um, it's overkill probably. I get more food than I'll need, but better to have too much food than not enough. So, we cook scrambled eggs with bacon. That'll be breakfast tomorrow. Sweet and sour pork is going to be dinner tonight. I'm going to be doing the PCT bear bag method um, to hang my bag with food. And I always bring directions because I haven't done it enough. So that's my directions for that. I got a single serving of Spam Classic here. It's nice and warm. Empty bag for garbage. That's my rock sack and wine with the carabiner on it to do the PCT bear hang. Bag hang. I've got three little tortilla racks. I've got a Justin's Classic Peanut Butter. That's nice and gooey from the heat. Um, and I got a jelly Bon Monman strawberry preserves. That came from Packet Gourmet, I believe. That's it in the bag then. And this is just a bag I had left over from the other hike I did. Which it's mostly I just lost my spam. <laughs> This is mostly stuff from the Cairn bags, like that Think Jerky, Ginger Orange, Grass-Fed Beef Jerky, that's from, that's from Cairn. That Cliff Bar I had. This Cliff Bar, Whey Protein, Peeler and Chocolate, that's from Cairn. It's awfully soft. This Trail Mix, Play Hard, Give Back, Dried Cranberry, Banana Chips, Peanut Butter, Chips, that's from Cairn. I got some Land Lakes uh, Arctic White Hot Chocolate. That's my favorite hot chocolate, hard to find. I've also got an apple cider. You can drink that cold or hot. And I've got two small Slim Jims and a pack of peanut butter. Four of them crackers, which is looking good right now. So it was quite a hike getting here. Not a hike, actually, quite a paddle, but um, I don't think these spots get used all that much. You don't see the wear and tear away from the campsite. I noticed the toilet is back there somewhere and you can't even see the path. So, I'm gonna I'm just eating lunch here. And collect some water and we'll check back in. Check back in later. Here we go. I'm leaving my shirt on. It's not to horrify anybody. I don't want to tuck it. Plus, I think if I get it wet, it'll help me stay cool. Taking a platypus. Out. Um, so that works. Get zip lock. Move out a little ways and see if I can just bag up some water. A lot of particulate in this water. A lot of particulate. 
Sounds like a heron. I'm gonna let that chillax in the sun for a while. I'm gonna get back so I can kill off any microbes on the surface. Uh, that water is gonna be a little yellow. That's pretty much uh, most water up here in the Adirondacks. Um, it's usually. Uh, tannins from the various trees so um, stuff that's actually was used to tan leather back in the day you get to come around the camera take you out here so we came from over in that direction over there Paddled all along this coast, all the way. So that stream that I talked about earlier is over there. There's a little cove over here. And then we are at campsite seven. So these things are usually out like that where you can see them. There's a big old downed tree. Those are usually out where you can see them, but it was not in this case. Uh, not in this case, but I missed. I think I saw what? What did I say? I saw campsite. What I thought was one. That could have been two. Uh, then I think it was three, which was the beach one. Didn't see four. I don't know that was three for sure. I'm guessing it was three. Uh, could have been four. Saw five, six, and seven. Um, it's quite a breeze picking up. Might get some rain tonight. I have the tarp and uh, up but not out it's, uh, in the snake skin. So I'll, I'll show you around that part of camp later. These little guys, I should know their name. But they're all over the place. They come out of these. That's their. They pupate or whatever the heck out of these things and then become that. And they sit here. It's a dragonfly, I guess. And they sit here. So these are all. These things are abandoned skeletons. And they sit up here until their wings are all dried out and ready to go. Some of them don't. Where'd he go? Some of them don't make it. For whatever reason. But I got the boat up on. This was a tricky kind of spot to get the boat in, but um, camp is past that big bright spot there. You got to be 150 feet from the water, I think it is, in the Adirondacks to camp, which kind of kills some of the views because you don't really get a view. Come out and sit on this tree here, I guess. Be kind of neat. If you're adventurous and have good balance, which I do not have. So I'm not gonna try that. But yeah, the lake keeps going on. Hold on. I don't want to fall and this is my iPhone I'm shooting right now. So this is the other side. Uh, so eight, nine, ten, and eleven are scattered around down there somewhere. They start getting further apart. I think 11 starts to wrap back around to where we came from. Boy, it's nice and cool out here, boy. It's getting hot at the campsite. I think I'll chill out here for a while and uh, cool off and then go back. It is now 2.08. We got a canoe out way out there in the distance. I don't know if you can see him. Camp on, not camp on, because uh, no camp in there. But you could have lunch.
watch out on those little rock outcroppings here. So I think we're looking at across the way there. I think that's five to the right and then uh, and where the beach is. And then over the, on the other side there. So five is like right in there. Well, that's that beach I stopped at and went back to it. So five is over there. And then six is around is around over here. And you got all this way here to get to seven. And I think eight is a, is a good distance away. Oh yeah, how cool y'all.
just noticed this guy. I don't know where he came from, but I've been sitting here watching the water and looking at these carcasses. And then I looked up, and there he was. I don't know if he saw me checking out his carcass and he came over or what. Hopefully, his wings are drying and he'll be able to fly off. So, I don't know if that's going to sit here once they crawl out and wait for their wings to dry. They don't move a whole lot, but he's running out of daylight. So hopefully I'm going to watch him for a while and see if he flies out. There's a crazy amount of, there's a crazy amount of life on this little rock, just in this little area where I am. There's a little inchworm. He must have fell off the tree. He's right down the road from the dragonfly or whatever that is, mayfly or whatever that is. He's not doing so well. That, bell, that back wing looks like it's stuck. I don't think he's gonna make it. He tries to buzz them and they don't straighten out, so I don't I don't know. Now I got little water bugs skittling all around. Don't see any fish or anything. There's all kinds of little bugs. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but yeah, see them? God knows what those are. Let me look at that. They almost appear, I guess they're on the surface of the water. Fast over there. But I think my little dragonfly friend is going to become lunch for a fishy. The wind blows and he's struggling to hang on to the rock. And I don't dare touch him or anything. I don't think I could help anyway. They'll probably get blown off and the fish will eat them. We're rolling up on 5 o'clock now. Just sitting here watching the water. Relaxing, listening to the water crash. On the... Rocks on this tree. Every now and then the water, a bunch of water bugs over Every now and then the water will, there you go, flow right over that. It's cool. Little detail. The wind is picking up. Temperatures dropped a little bit. I'm gonna have to check the forecast again and see if if we've got uh, rain coming. It's gonna hold off until tomorrow afternoon, but it may be. Might be coming. Big giant spider. Still in that same spot. He's pretty big. You get any sense of how big he is? Right there. Big one. Look at those. Those are called wolf spiders. They're over there in the. Another one of those husks. There. I can't focus on it. Just to try it. It's coming down in the water to grab something. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but I just ran back to the campsite to get so the camera. It'll be hard to hold it steady, but there's a loon right there. Way across the way. At least one. Yeah, it's hard to hold it steady. I zoomed out that far. See the head right there in the middle? Loons have this ability to dive like a submarine. They kind of float half in the water. And they can raise and lower how far they're out of the water. They spend their whole lives pretty much in the water because of the way they're Back legs are so far back that they can't actually walk on land. So their nests and everything are built on floating areas so that they can raise their young. Yep. I hope that it calls tonight. Because there's nothing like the call of a loon. 
I didn't see any on the way over here, so I was thinking I wasn't going to have any, but hopefully this one will call. And I'll try to record that audio anyways. Hopefully there's another one there. Oh, it's going back out. Could be she has a nest in there, around the edge of that. Well, I didn't see when I, of course I came by there, but I was quite a distance away, so she may not have cared. She may have a nest in there. Hard to tell if it's a male or female. But it's way over there. I just, you see that black and then a band of white bobbing. I'm always on the lookout for it. They're just an awesome bird. Just sitting out here soaking my feet in the water and relaxing. And I noticed it and I was like, oh, gotta get me that. So I ran back and got the other camera, which I haven't used yet this trip, but I'm glad I brought it now. So hopefully we'll get some loon calling tonight. Normally they would have done a little, but I haven't heard anything. Really quiet, doesn't seem to be anybody around now um, there were people paddling earlier that were chatting it up one guy paddled by and he uh, was talking to somebody on the cell phone I think because there is, there is just a little bit of coverage out here it's sketchy okay guys I'm going to show you um, my water purification system that I just rigged up I saw this online somewhere um, I think it's pretty much a copy of that but uh, it's the platypus big zip bladder water bladder um, and I cut off the end the bite valve I was trying to not cut but I couldn't get that off um, so that's the bite valve that comes on it I just cut it off and then I stuck it on the other half so this is the thing that comes with your with your Sawyer squeeze that's your mouth piece right with your Sawyer whatever these whatever size Sawyer this thing is this is half of the I think they call it the inline kit or something like that um, this is the outside um, but not you don't use that for what I'm doing here what you do use is the inside so this gray piece screws into your Sawyer okay in the direction of flow then you just push on where I cut off the valve bite valve I push that onto here and then this is the bottle adapter this is a separate purchase again all of this is separate from each other um, this screws onto a water bottle to allow you to just filter into a water bottle so well, the system I got going here now, it's an automatic, as soon as you, this, this is a quick connect down here. So if you don't want water to flow, you just uh, unhook that. Because the second you hook that, I don't know if you can see that, but there's water in that tube. Water starts to come out the tube. So let me set this down. So I've got your standard smart water sports cap bottle there it's the top cap most people use for hiking nowadays I'm just going to take that off okay so that's off I'm almost out of battery on this one so let me just see if I can hurry up here we're just going to connect that Now I'm going to reconnect the quick connect clip on the bag. It's hard to do this with. Okay. The water. 
water starts to flow. My bag's a highly filled thing. There you go. The higher your bag, I could probably cut this hose down a little bit too. And then what I did is I opened up the bag and let some air in after I filled one bottle just to just to see if that helped improve the flow. I don't know if it did or not. As you can see, even, even with the bag not, <coughs> the bag isn't fully, so it's going to keep flowing. So when you get near the top, I just, I just disconnected. <laughs> Could put, I, I do have some uh, I do have some um, some like stopper things that I think I'm gonna put on there so that you don't have to monkey around with uh, unhooking the, the holes but I mean that took no time at all all right so that's uh, the platypus big zip Sawyer filter they don't even tell you what which one it is it's the bigger of the two um, with the inline kit and the bottle adapter. One last thing I forgot to point out with that bottle kit, you can back flush your Sawyer, which they recommend, um, just by you know taking the uh, the gray piece off. So you take you would take this piece off and just squeeze that bottle, and it would back full for you. Um, so that that saves you having to carry the syringe. That they use for backflow. Okay, so the toilet is back of that way. So instead of wandering my way through, uh, there's a remnant of a path here, I guess. This is just tick, tick heaven back here. So far, I've had. Um, couple of visitors. I had a little sparrow. And I'm wearing the, I know this is attractive, but I'm wearing the uh, bug net just to keep them off my ears and neck. And I'm also rocking the Mora Eldris neck knife with fire steel kit. That's the only knife I brought other than a, um, a Leatherman uh, wave. So again, we have a road back here. Probably how the rangers get in here to check on everybody. Four wheelers or hike it in themselves. Maybe they take horses, I don't know. But I bet they use those when they built these sites. Well, they didn't do a whole lot of building here. Right? And we've got a regular one like we saw back at the other site. Just a, a box. Some people may not like the. Oh, where's the. Where's the. <laughs> There we go. You gotta get at it from the right side. So, some people may like these better because you're not out in a, you're not in the dark, dingy, scary um, outhouses. But there is zero privacy. So, if you're with somebody, you better you better like them a whole heck of a lot. So here's the Dutchwork Chameleon setup. Um, it doesn't look right to me. I'm not. I'm still learning all this stuff. I've got my Superfly and the snake skins up top with the Dutch Continuous uh, Ridgeline kit going. These trees are right at the at the distance where I could get that tarp with the with that hardware setup. Um, I don't know how much leeway there. The hammock's got a lot of sag going in the ridge line there, but it doesn't when I get into it. But I don't know if I have that bug net on backwards. I haven't figured out the the way to tell which way to put the bug net on based on where your head or foot is. I've got my feet down at the end that you're looking at, and then my head is over at the other end. I got the pullouts on there. Um, the top quilt's in there. I'm using the uh, beetle cinch beetles, beetle buckles. I forget what he calls these. I'm terrible with this stuff. Should get better at it, I guess, eh? Those deals with with that webbing. Dutch's 
carabiners. Um, yeah, I don't know. It looks like this might be pulling or... I don't know. I might flip it around and see if it helps. Um, okay. That's the titanium. No. Sorry, I take two on that. Um, my top cover was titanium gray. <clears throat> I have that with me because it was on the hammock. I don't need it. It's in the 80s. It's going to be in the 70s tonight. <clears throat> Could have left that at home. But I didn't feel like monkeying around with switching it off. So I put the bug net on when I got here. I'm going to try flipping that. See, I don't even know if I'm supposed to flip it end to end or uh, just turn it over. So that'd be, that'd be a good uh, instructional video for somebody to do who's figured it out. Same goes for the top cover. <clears throat> but we're ready. I don't think it's going to rain tonight, um, but I'm ready in case it does. Uh, I brought my hiking poles just in case it, just in case it rains, I can go uh, porch mode. Um, and I also brought my pole mod for the Superfly so that I can get a little more room in there if I need to. Um, earlier I mentioned that I had a couple of visitors and I only talked about one, the little sparrow, uh, came flying around camp. But whenever I camp lately, for the last several years anyway, and it started on a trip with Dan where we were up on Floodwood Road and, um... It rained almost the whole time we were there, but we stuck it out. And we had a little yellow swallowtail butterfly that just hung around the whole weekend. I think we were there the whole, well, I think we were there two nights maybe. And he hung around the whole time. And then now it seems like every time I go and stay overnight anywhere hiking, there's a yellow swallowtail. So it's kind of neat. And I saw there's been one flying around here today. The bugs keep coming and going. I don't know what's going on there. I, uh, <coughs> excuse me. I, uh, did put on some different bug spray. It's this stuff. Repel lemon eucalyptus. I'm trying to stay away from the DEET A because it wreaks havoc on, on, uh, like your rubber like on your grips of your uh hiking poles if you have rubber grips you've got deet on your hands it'll it'll eat the rubber and get it all over your hands it makes a heck of a mess um <clears throat> so i'm trying all these all natural ones plus i don't know what it does to fabrics <clears throat> i had to bug that on my head to keep the uh bugs off they're not bad right now Oh, that's got uh, permethrin on it, so I don't know if that's working or not. Got a few sticks in the fire. That's my silky supercell saw. I did cut a little bit, a little bit of wood, not much. There's two pieces this here uh, with that. Uh, that's a good little saw. I've got my Lucy outdoor charging here, so I can have that in the. Uh, Anyway, tonight I've downloaded several movies to various apps. So I downloaded some to Netflix. I downloaded some to Amazon Prime. I downloaded some just my iTunes video app. So <clears throat> I'll have videos to watch in the hammock because I'll probably be up half the night. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Camp's a little dirty right now. Uh cluttered I'm putting that's the this is one heck of a bag here's first time I've used this uh, I think it's an NRS yeah NRS access duffel <clears throat> that had my hammock and quilts <clears throat> and whatnot in it and it's a waterproof bag folded it all up and I shoved that in the bow of the kayak it just barely fit in there uh, you got to make sure you get most of the air out before you seal it up because it is airtight those aren't mine, those broken tent poles. Somebody left those here. 
Uh, I'll leave it there in case somebody needs them. Then I got a very smattering of stuff. Got that foot pad from Thermarest uh, because Shirk had it in one of his videos and he said he puts it in his foot box of his um, top quilt to give his feet a little cushioning because I noticed that that would bother my heels in the in the hammock. So I got that, but I sat on it um, on the way here and uh, I mean it's, what is that, like an inch or so thick? And then I used, because normally when I sit in that kayak for any length of time, my rear end hurts, starts to hurt me. Normally I use this, but it's just not cutting it, this paddler pad. Um, but that's not cutting anymore, so I use this for my back, and then I use the thermorous pad. Um, not focusing today. For uh, my my back. No oh, thermorous I sat on. Sorry. A pair of Crocs just to wear around later. Um, a hygiene kit is there. First aid kit. This is all my kitchen stuff. I brought the solo stove. Um, I don't know if I'll use that or not. I got my regular cook kit in here. Got my regular cook kit in here. It's in there. I got my this is a sponge to sponge out the, the kayak, which I need to do. Got my meal cozy. I made the freshest meal cozy. So I put my dinner in that. Oh, so my fuel bottle leaked, which is why I have it in a Ziploc bag. It leaked quite a bit, actually. So, so much for that Vargo Outdoors bottle. And I made sure to tighten that. Some wet ones. There's my cook kit. I brought this soap that came with uh, one of the Cairn boxes. Just a, one of the bandanas that came with the Cairn box. And this is Go Bites Spoon and Fork Combo. I'm going to try that for the first time tonight. Uh, that came with the Karen. And then I brought my... Uh, got my Schmog. And I'm sitting in a uh, Helix chair. Here it folds up. I use that to keep the bugs from biting me through the mesh. My pant bottoms and my bug net. Fire started. That was with one match from this cheap kit I got from Walmart with matches that must be struck on this little you get, strike pad that comes in a plastic bag inside this waterproof container. Which, you know, I'd rather have a strike anywhere match. But. And then I used a uh, Vaseline-soaked cotton ball, which is still burning down there, by the way. That's the main source of the fire, and I'm just going to monkey around there and get it going better. Had to, uh, got a mosquito coil going over here. Because the bugs are getting bad again. I don't know if those things work or not. But We'll get the fire going a little, and then we'll uh, get dinner on. Okay. Alright, I'm not going to lie, I had to cheat. Most of that stuff was wet, even though it appeared to be dry. It, it was kind of wet, it was hissing. So I used another match and another uh, cotton ball, Vaseline soap cotton ball. And then I squirted a little um, of my uh, stove fuel on it. Just to get it to catch. Now she's caught. I should be good to go. So now we're gonna make dinner. We're gonna pick up our supplies and we're gonna make dinner. I was gonna use <coughs> the uh, solo stove, but I'm not going to now because I don't think I'm gonna be able to get anything going with these little sticks. So I'm just gonna use the alcohol stove. Okay, so here we are in the cook kit. Of course, it's made out of reflectics. That's the lid. I keep a piece of aluminum foil down in there for uh, just a ground barrier. Of course, there's the lid to the pots, the totes. These are the uh, 
human gear go bites, I think they call them. That was in a Cairn box. You can lash them together until you have a long handle deal. So we're going to use those tonight in there. <coughs> I've shown this before and I haven't really changed it, but <coughs> keep a little piece of, piece of chamois cloth for cleanup. Normally I have a uh, mini Bic or a Bic lighter in there, but uh, that one died on me just now. I went to use it, so we don't have that. We're going to have to use flint and steel, or I might just get a twig out of the side of the fire. Um, one ounce of alcohol there. I have more alcohol available to me. This is my Fancy Feast stove. That's an actual Fancy Feast stove from Zelf. Simmering, we're not going to use that tonight. This is a Topes cup. This is the 375 cup. Uh, there we go. I won't use that unless um, I make coffee or hot apple cider. Keep a little scrubby in there in case we need it for cleanup. Normally, if I'm doing this meal in a bag deal, I don't. Uh, I don't need to clean up anything so and then we have the Tokes 550 pot 550 milliliters with graduations inside which is good because I don't know if you can see those or not oh, there's some on the outside too because I can't ever tell how much liquid is what and then I have a windscreen that's made out of aluminum sheeting And the fire's already dying down, even though I had it going pretty good there. Everything's pretty, pretty, pretty wet. So we may, although I could use the smoke to keep the bugs off. That's fine with me. So, oh, the loons are calling. I don't know if you can hear that. So, sweet and sour pork. from out else calls for three quarter cups of boiling water so we've only got eight ounces which is a cup and 16 ounces I believe eight ounces a cup so we're gonna go halfway between eight and sixteen should give me three quarters, I think. See, I'm not good with this stuff. If anything, it's going to be too soupy. I'm not going to call it out today, I don't think. Yeah, what's that? Oh, my gosh, I'm going to throw it in the fire. Because I don't want to carry it back. And I got plenty more, so. All right, now, the fire's completely out. Well, not completely out, it's cold. Let's see if this works. Nope. There we go.
All right, we'll give that a few minutes more. Let it come to a boil. Sometimes you can stuff these out. So I can see the alcohol beans. So I poured that hot water in there. In there. And we're gonna put it shut. He wants us to stir carefully first. Let's stand I have a hard time with the camera today. Let's stand eight to nine minutes. But we're gonna put it we're gonna put it in the cozy. see where we're at about I'll give her 10 15 minutes usually better to go longer and we'll check back maybe I'll work on the smoldering fire I don't think you can see this but it's pretty soupy in 20 minutes I put way too much water in okay. here's a little cheese the bugs are back I managed to burn a hole my pants right there. I don't know how to pull that off. This is still wicked hot. There we go. The bear if it wasn't so watery, but. My phone. I might go to bed. It's 7 Eleven, I believe. 7 is a uh, hiker midnight. So. I may eat, pack up, go organize things a little because they're kind of spread out. Bring stuff over to be underneath the hammock, I guess, in case it rains. And I can deploy the tarp. 
Hopefully you can hear me because that camera's quite a ways away. One thing I forgot to bring was napkins, paper towels. Usually I stick that in like one for per meal. So it's like 8.46. Um, after some messing around, I got the... I did decide to put the undercoat on just because this is a single layer uh, chameleon. And um, I didn't want the bugs biting me through the through the um, single layer so I threw the quilt on and discovered that I'm missing a carabiner on the suspension of the quilt so I'm not sure what happened to that seems odd that would have fallen off I might have it on the war bonnet because I think it's the last time I used it um, so I'll have to check that when I get home. I pirated one off of a, I have a, that map holder that's holding the map. Uh, so I pirated it off of there for now. I don't like losing stuff, so that's going to irritate me. Uh, it's still pretty warm. Uh, I've got my watch up in the Dutch, in the original line organizer. I'll just turn the camera. I don't know if you can see it or not, but. I wish Apple would let you flip the camera during recording. I don't know why it doesn't. But... And then I got my Anchor Power Core battery there to charge the phone. I've already charged it up once. And then my Lucy Light's up there. And I just fell off. I need a carabiner on the Lucy Light, too. So it is. Seventy-seven point nine degrees right now, so it's pretty warm. I'm not using the under quilt or a top quilt at this point. It's just scrunched down the bottom. I'm sure I'll put it on as I cool off. But I got pretty warm trying to get in here and everything. So so far, I think I'm okay. It's pretty comfortable. Um, gonna watch some movies on the phone and go to bed. So we'll see you in the morning. Oh, well, it's Sunday morning. Made it through the night. About 6.42 a.m. right now. It's already in the 70s, I think. Been laying here watching the mosquitoes. Try to penetrate the bug net. Probably got 30 or 40 of them just swarming here. I gotta get up and get something to eat and go to the bathroom, but uh, I know I'm gonna get mobbed the second I get out of here. So I'm kind of delaying as long as I can. Moon called for a little while last night, not too much. The buzzing of the mosquitoes pretty much kept me up. It's just they're just wicked, making me think I really should clip the hammock with permethrin just to hopefully kill them all off. It's just it's just ridiculous. Okay, this has been sitting here quite a while. I brought most of the stuff down to the boat. Not bad. One of the ones where you have to pour off the excess water. It's actually right in the instructions. So I'm going to pour this off, eat it, and finish packing up the boat, and then decide if I'm going to 
paddle around the lake, go back, or hang out here for a while. Hey guys, so it was later than I thought it was because my watch was on a different setting. It must have been a timer or a stopwatch or something, but it is actually 8.50. I've had breakfast. Everything's all packed up. Um, it's very overcast. I checked the weather. They say it's not going to storm until tonight, but um, there's quite a temperature shift. Let me switch the camera around here. It's gotten a little bit cooler. The wind is picking up, so I really don't want to be on the water if the wind is going to get worse with uh, as, as overloaded as this kayak is. So everything's all loaded up. Might have to push the, that in further. I don't know if I'm going to get my feet in. I did jury rig the GoPro with the UltraPod to my shock rigging, so I'm going to try to film the trip back. And I'll cut in, I'll cut in some of that footage if that works out. Anyway, that was my first solo camping trip as well as my first solo uh, kayaking trip. Went pretty well. Uh, a couple of improvements can be made. I did burn a hole in my pants. Not the end of the world. Uh, I think I can patch them. But we're going to head out. Uh, Round Lake Wilderness uh, outside of Tupper Lake, New York.
So I'm back at the put-in. It's 10:13. Um, we're roughly probably 24 hours from when we took off. Uh, I'm gonna unload the kayak and sign out, and then drag the kayak up this. Let me show you here. So there's the kayak. But I gotta unload it. It's 50 pounds on its own, plus all the stuff I have. So I'm gonna unload it in stages and then drag it up. You got one, two, three, four, five, six stairs to go up. So back at the log book. Almost took myself out with that. And we're gonna sign out. Okay, we're all loaded up and ready to head out. It is 11 o'clock. Uh, I'm going to head back through Tupper Lake and probably stop at uh, one of the ice cream places and have something to, to, to uh, a little ice cream cone to cool off. I had a Mountain Dew sitting in my cooler with a, this was frozen, sitting in the cooler with a couple of ice packs as a reward for myself when I got back. Let's see how cold it is. Yeah, no, not cold much. It's just above lukewarm, actually. But refreshing on the same. Nonetheless, we're the same, yeah. I am chewed up, bit up. A nice one on the hand right there. Uh, but it was fun. It was worth it. It was a learning experience, and I proved to myself I could do it. It got pretty dicey on the way back. Um, let me cut this air conditioning down because it's loud. Uh, it got pretty... I fought a headwind the whole way back, and the waves were pretty choppy. Hopefully... Um, You'll see footage on the GoPro. Um, my card actually filled up. I thought the battery ran out, but my card actually filled up on the GoPro part of the way back. So I didn't get the whole thing, but you wouldn't want to watch two hours of me paddling anyway. Um, so I'll, I'll cut a little bit of that in so you can just see how rough it was. That's probably some of the roughest water I've been in kayaking. Um, so yeah, that was it. That was Round Lake in the Round Lake Wilderness outside of Tupper Lake, New York. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you again soon.